and welcome to CX Today. My name is Charlie and today I'm delighted to be joined by Corey Savory, Vice President of Customer Experience and Service at Traeger Grills. Corey, thanks very much for coming onto the platform. How are you doing today? Fantastic. Thanks for having me this morning. But, uh, yeah, great. As I said, great to have you um, join us. And this, it's a really kind of fascinating uh, story that kind of you have to share for us today in terms of uh, Traeger Grill's CCAS uh, migration story and kind of the implementation um, of uh, the Internet of Things in your contact center. But maybe kind of to kick us off for anybody that um, doesn't know, I think maybe the best place to start this conversation is just by simply asking you maybe to tell us a little bit um, about uh, Traeger Grill's and what you do there. Sure, I, I would absolutely love to. I was a customer of Traeger uh, before they called uh, me about the position, so I was only too excited to take the call and have the opportunity to, to come to such an amazing brand. Um, Traeger is the industry leader and inventor of wood pellet grilling. We design, manufacture, and sell premium wood pellet grills that allow our customers to make amazing meals to share with friends and family. Our product line is now connected, IoT with app connectivity, um, and, and we sell our products globally. We're in the U.S. and Canada, as well as in the U.K., Germany, um, other European countries, uh, Australia, New Zealand. Our, we have an amazing customer base uh, that we love to refer to as the Traeger Hood, uh, and they enjoy using their Traeger grills to smoke low and slow, great traditional barbecue meals like brisket or ribs, or hot and fast grilling like chicken, and steak, or burgers, uh, and many of our customers really like the flavor of wood-fired cooking that adds to dishes like pizza and baked goods. Absolutely. And if you can make it in uh, Australia as kind of uh, uh, for helping the barbecues over there, you can make it anywhere, I'm sure. So it's an indicator of the quality, <laughs> maybe. Um, there, but I think, you know, focusing uh, back on the customer experience, of course, that's kind of your main um, role there. And you mentioned earlier that you kind of, uh, we spoke earlier, sorry, about kind of your application of IoT. But before that, maybe let's talk a little bit about your uh, CCAS migration. And you chose uh, to work with AWS and Amazon Connect for your CCAS uh, migration. Could you yes. maybe uh, tell us, maybe give us some insight into the motivators but, uh, for why you chose Connect? Uh, absolutely. So it was about four years ago, actually, this week that I started at Traeger Grills. Um, I was fortunate and unfortunate, but mostly fortunate, to arrive on a scene where Traeger had very little uh, call center technology of their own. Uh, we had a CRM that I don't know necessarily who designed it, um, but not someone who really uh, was very familiar with how agents operate. Um, and everything else we relied upon our BPO partner um, for their, their traditional telephony and switches and um, forecasting system. So uh, it was is actually the best place to be where we could um, take that onto ourselves and, and build uh, what, what it is we wanted without a lot of tech debt. Um, so the reason that we went with Amazon Connect was a few reasons. One, ease of setup. Uh, we wanted something that we ourselves within the CX organization could implement and maintain without heavy code or reliance on any other organization. We wanted to move quickly and didn't want to be um, stuck in a position of shared resources and prioritization uh, against other projects at the company. We also really wanted a solution that we knew was infinitely scalable easy to use and that would integrate with our existing technology and that we could build features and functions uh, that we knew we wanted, but we really first had to get the basics in place. Um, we did it over a weekend actually, uh, on a Friday afternoon once we learned that our phone number had been ported. Uh, by Monday morning, we were up and running on Amazon Connect and starting to take calls on our own system and capture our own data for the first time without being reliant on our BPO. Well, that's quite an incredible journey, actually, considering where kind of you started from to where you are now. That's kind of a huge, uh, it's a huge difference. And um, yeah, so lots of great stuff there. And I do kind of want to, as I kind of mentioned a few times now, uh, maybe focus a little bit um, on um, some of the features that you have in the solution I, and the Internet of Things especially. Could you maybe give us a little insight into how you're using the Internet of Things and how it's improved your contact center experience? Absolutely. This is something I'm really excited to talk about. Um, share with you both things we've had in place for a while, um, as well as a, a current project that we're working on um, to take it even to the next level. So um, first and foremost, because our grills are connected, uh, we are fed all of the grilled data 
through the AWS cloud, uh, and we're able to create cook visual visualizations uh, that our agents can use to as be, assist in diagnosing grill issues and cooking behaviors. So instead of solely relying on running a cook and doing traditional troubleshooting where you're trying to get the customer on a call in the moment to replicate an issue, agents have access to a complete history of the customer's cooks and can use them to identify whether we're seeing part failures, error codes, even maintenance related experiences like grills having a hard time getting to temperature, which is generally a maintenance related issue um, with lack of airflow, for example. We also see common customer initiated behaviors uh, that impact a cook like opening the grill too often, changing temps frequently, or even putting food on the grill before it's hit set temperature. And all of those things can result in a less than optimal cooking experience and outcome. So giving agents access to um, the ability to look at a history of cooks, not just one that's ongoing in the moment, not just one isolated cook, but a history of cooks to really understand how the grill is performing and look to see if, if um, there are actual issues with the grill, uh, maintenance opportunities or education for our customers on how to have a, a better cooking experience um, through their own cooking behaviors. Another, uh, t another tool that we've implemented, while not necessarily IoT, uh, is a key tool that we've implemented called Loop. Uh, Loop is a video streaming tool that allows agents to leverage the camera on a customer's smartphone to stream video images in real time to get eyes on the situation. So this, this has resulted in more accurate diagnostics. We're not just relying on asking questions, even in a call center, really good open-ended questions. There's really no substitute for being able to see what the customer is experiencing uh, with your own eyes and your own trained eyes, right? Um, and lastly, I mentioned some things that we're in the process of right now with IoT. So a moment ago, I mentioned how our agents have access to individual cooks to be able to look at the history and, and identify uh, what's going on. But we're working on an, an ML AI project right now that is going to train an engine to look at not just one cook at a time, but a, a, a package of recent cooks um, and scan those through very quickly uh, for, for the AI ML to interpret, does it look like the grill's functioning properly? Does it look like there's a maintenance related issue or is there customer education uh, that's necessary that takes some of that cognitive load off of our agents uh, and surfaces it for the agent quickly and more um, consistently than training an agent how to uh, interpret cooks. Yeah, I mean, so much really great stuff in there. It's, it's interesting as well. We've heard of kind of um, the kind of remote asset monitoring kind of parts of IoT, but with the fact that you can get visualization and all of those metrics that you just described there is quite fascinating and all the other features as well, such as the video. Um, and obviously that kind of helps your give your agent context as they help uh, customers solve their problems. But I imagine it actually stops uh, you from sending maybe people out to help and support. And I imagine that cuts, cuts quite a lot of business costs as well, maybe. Um, or something there. So the efficiencies, uh, in addition to the kind of customer ex uh, uh, experience improvements, are quite remarkable. Uh, Absolutely, I can't wait to sh share with you um, some of the changes in our critical metrics as a result of uh, these things that we've implemented. Yeah, awesome. Uh, maybe we should. Uh, maybe that should be kind of my next question. I was thinking maybe first, if we can, uh, you've already given us so much information about how kind of um, Amazon Connect has helped you to transform your data strategy and overall contact center intelligence. Is there maybe any other tools that you've used before we get into those business results? Um, I, I can't not mention QuickSight. So because our solutions are built on an AWS backbone, it's super easy to create reports and dashboards in QuickSight without the need of a traditional BI organization. Within my own team, we can harness all of our data and, and provide real-time KPI reporting at an enterprise level, as well as to each and every individual agent and member of our CX organization. So um, all day, every day, in real time, our agents know how they're performing against goals, against peers. They're seeing their customer feedback. Um, there's no need to wait for a traditional one-on-one -on -one with a team leader coming with spreadsheets. Um, agents know how they're performing. Um, and also QuickSight isn't just a KPI tool. Uh, we use it for all sorts of analytics that I'm able to provide as the CX leader feedback into the organization, um, both on what's driving contacts, grill models, um, increase in replacement rates on certain parts. 
um, to, to look for quality opportunities. Um, so we're, we're really loving uh, QuickSight as a, a key data visualization and analytics tool uh, that's really helped shape the way that we see our data quickly and easily. That's really awesome as well, that you're not just kind of holding those insights in the contact center as so many businesses do, but you're also kind of pumping them out into the wider um, spheres as well. I think that's that's really awesome to hear too. But um, maybe let's, let's as, you, as we kind of just mentioned, uh, talk a little bit about those critical customer experience metrics and how all this amazing work um, that you've been doing has helped to uh, kind of move the dial on those. What have you kind of seen following this kind of big contact center transformation process that's happened over the past few uh, years. You know, as I mentioned in the beginning, it was really it was really fun actually um, to walk into an opportunity where there was essentially nothing. Uh, we got to build from scratch. I know a lot of companies don't have that um, that luxury, right? Um, so once we were able to get our own data by standing up Amazon Connect and QuickSight uh, and create an actual baseline of performance, uh, we baselined in at 45% top box CSAT, um, which certainly no company should ever be proud of. But it was a baseline uh, and an opportunity to learn why and improve. So now we are consistently hitting 93% top box CSAT um, and have been for the last, I'd say, two years. Uh, first contact resolution, we've also doubled. Uh, we went from a baseline of, of a whopping 35% uh, to now consistently for the last few years hitting um, 73 to 75% and we're edging up um, and, and have a goal to hit 80 by the end of this year. We also measure a few other metrics that are really important to us, part resolution rate. So we wanna know if the part that we sent to a customer is actually fixing the issue. Um, one, so that we can follow up with the customer if it's not, to make sure that we don't leave them in the wild uh, with a grill that's still not working, but also for our own insight into diagnostic accuracy. So if we're consistently getting a diagnosis wrong and sending the wrong part, that takes away from the customer experience. It didn't work. They had to wait for the part to be shipped. They had to install it. So we're really passionate about identifying those opportunities with part resolution rate to feed back into our processes to ensure that our troubleshooting um, is effective uh, and that we're only sending the right part when necessary in the first time. And last but not least, um, in addition to cutting warranty spend almost in half, we've also reduced time to proficiency for our agents from a traditional 90 days post new hire uh, to 45 days uh, uh, from, from graduating from a new hire, two week traditional new hire training um, to hitting uh, those, those KPI metrics and goals. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of great. It's shown improvement across the kind of the customer outcomes, the agent outcomes at the end there, and also the business outcomes too. And I thought it was kind of also um, amazing how you could create a um, sort of metric on uh, part uh, part resolution uh, and how you could kind of customize those metrics. I think that's also uh, that's really awesome to hear. And there was obviously there's a lot kind of uh, there's a lot going on there. It's really great to hear kind of customer speak so highly about kind of the solutions that they're using within uh, the customer experience too. Um, so it kind of makes me think as a final question, what advice would you maybe have for a contact center that's considering um, Amazon Connects for its kind of contact center transformation process? Um, honestly, I'd say keep it simple. Uh, focus on the most important things first. Um, don't get distracted um, by really cool technology. Those are features and functions you can obviously add. But think for scale, think for simplicity, don't implement things that you aren't quite sure yet how you're going to use and whether or not you're really gonna see the benefit or if your customers really are going to see the benefit from it. Just because a technology exists doesn't mean it's right for your customer base and you better do the, the most important things first. Get that solid baseline, get the tools in place, understand how you're using them efficiently and then start to build some of this um, other really um, fun and cool technology on top that's really going to wow your customers, but ultimately it's, it's about the outcomes. That's awesome. Some really uh, great practical um, advice as well for uh, people to take away. So I really appreciate uh, you taking the time to speak to me uh, today, Corey. I've learned a lot. So thank yeah, thanks, uh, thanks very much again. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Excellent. And also thank you to everybody for watching. Bye for now.